Okay, um, today we have a bit of a real project. So for those of you that have watched my previous few videos, you might have noticed that I don't have a YouTube profile photo yet. And even my social media um, profile photos are a little out of date. They're a bit um, rough for someone who does photography uh, as a hobby. So my intention is to rectify that today. While I can use my website banner as my profile photo, um, I was hoping to do something a little more creative. Now, this wasn't my original idea. I was inspired by a couple of blog posts and Reddit threads describing a process for creating a Polaroid selfie. I'll link them below. My goal today is to come away with a good quality Polaroid selfie that I can use as my profile picture across all of my social media accounts. And at the same time, um, I was hoping to take you guys along for the ride. So yeah, let's get to it. You saw me setting up this softbox earlier, and this is where we're going to be using to expose the scene when we take the actual photo. Um, inside the softbox, there is a speed light, which I can trigger using a remote trigger for the flash. This will act as an off-camera key light to hopefully simulate window lighting. Um, as some of you might know already, uh, the SX70 cameras, the old Polaroid cameras, don't have any manual control, nor is there a self-timer feature. When you press the shutter in a well-lit scene like this, it'll start the exposure right away. Without the self-timer feature, it becomes very difficult to take a photo of yourself from more than an arm length away. Actually, it's pretty much impossible without some heavy modifications to the camera. But there is a technical quirk that we can exploit. The old SX70 cameras need a lot of light. The fastest aperture on these cameras is f8 and the film speed is ISO 160. If you put this camera into a dark environment, it's not going to be able to collect a lot of light even if it keeps this shutter open for a really long time. And the quirk that I had mentioned earlier is that these cameras have a maximum long shutter duration of 8 seconds. The 8 second shutter duration works perfectly for us. Um, it means that you can click the shutter in the darkness, walk away, trigger the flash, and in 8 seconds the shutter will close by itself. As long as you can get all of those things accomplished within 8 seconds, you're good to go. Now that's in theory, but the problem for me is that I have fairly little experience with flash photography. So naturally, there's going to be a trial and error period where I'm going to be figuring out what flash strength works best to properly expose the Polaroid. I don't want to go around wasting film to try and to find the correct exposure, so I'm going to be using my main camera to simulate a Polaroid exposure by setting the shutter speed to 8 seconds, by setting the aperture to f8, and by setting the ISO to 160. It's not going to be a perfect simulation um, because ISOs of digital sensors vary from camera to camera and they are definitely not the same as the film sensitivity in well, chemical film, but I figure it should get us close enough that I can then start experimenting with the film itself. So let's get to it. Um, I'm going to be shutting off the lights now and borrowing that camera. So uh, we'll see how that goes, I guess. Before we turn off the lights, let's talk about lighting for a moment. I wanted to use a single key light to create a moody atmosphere with stark shadows. I was trying for a Rembrandt style side window light effect, so I set up the center of the softbox around 15 degrees above my eye line and 30 degrees in front of me, at just over one arm length away. One trick I learned recently for portraits is to set up your softbox so that the diffusion surface is pointed perpendicular to the line between the subject and the camera, as if there was a large window directly to the left or right of the subject. The setup feathers the light a little bit and softens the light hitting the far side of the subject's face. I find that pointing the softbox directly at the subject doesn't do as good of a job at feathering the light and creates harsher reflections if the skin is just a little bit oily. 
Lily. Okay, now that we have the lights off, let's talk about the sample images that came from the digital camera. I started this trial by setting the flash power to 100%, which works almost perfectly. If you ignore the terrible focusing job that I did, the exposure on this image actually turned out quite good. The bright side of the face is well lit, while the dark side of the face still has detail. And there's just that touch of Rembrandt light on the cheeks on the dark side. Then I took two more trial images just to make sure that I can do this reliably and try out different poses. In the second image, I noticed a bit of a problem with my setup. The remote trigger for the flash has an LED screen that's quite bright. If I move around during the exposure without covering the LED screen on the trigger, there's this light streak that appears in the image. So I had to be mindful of that when working with the Polaroid. In the final trial image, I tried a pose where I'm looking away from the light and like that quite a bit. My original intention was to get a shot of me in this pose as well, but I miscounted the number of shots I had left in the film stack, so I didn't get that. Regarding the exposure, one thing to note is that digital cameras tend to have a much larger dynamic range than Polaroids, especially color Polaroids. And color Polaroid film has a bit of a sweet spot in the middle of its exposure for color rendition. So depending on how well you want to expose for the colors in the shadows or highlights, you may need to adjust the flash power accordingly. Okay, so uh, we are pretty set up. Oh, I wanted to show you. This is how I was hoping the scene would look like. Let's do a bit of cleanup though. Okay, so uh, now actually working with the SX-70. My copy of the SX-70 doesn't actually have tripod mount holes. Um, in my previous video, I had talked about a vintage flash. Uh, this device here. And this device, um, luckily, does have a tripod mount hole. And it's actually quarter 20. So this is actually one of the big reasons that I decided to keep this instead of the um, more modern flash find myself a quarter 20 Arca Swiss plate. Now this gets mounted onto any Arca Swiss tripod. Okay, now to show you, this is basically my final setup. This is the XX70, this is the flash unit, and underneath I've got an Arca plate attached to the rest of the tripod. Anyways, um, I'm gonna frame this and focus it, and um, we're good to go. Now the problem comes to focusing. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna be able to sit here and focus on myself, so I'm gonna have to try to... What am I gonna do? Man, it's moments like these I wish I had a new camera tripod. So, I'm gonna be focusing on that. Okay, that looks to be just about in focus. The center of this chair is now my marker. Good to go. Uh, yeah, let's try this out, I guess. Okay, moment of truth. That's longer than eight seconds. <clears throat> this
This is what it looks like right now. The one thing that I'm noticing is uh, I probably set the framing to be a little too wide. Uh, for my next attempt, I'm gonna try to set this a little tighter. This picture is actually turning out quite well. So yeah, um, I brought the camera closer, I've refocused it, and um, I'm probably going to adjust the flash power down by two thirds of a stop, I guess. I like the color of this sweater on this one. The face is just a little too bright. Lights off. Picture number two. Um, the developer is definitely not spreading that well on this image either, but uh, we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so these are the two photos that I ended up with. The framing for the second photo is definitely better, but uh, the developer didn't spread, so there's a couple of random streaks on the picture. I don't know if you can see them from here. The first photo also looks not bad. So yeah, uh, I guess the first photo is what we're gonna use. I'm fairly happy with it actually, it turned out really good. Okay, um, I guess it's time to wrap up the video. Uh, hopefully you've been inspired to get creative with your own photography. Um, it's been quite fun diving into the technicalities of how to get this shot done. I'm pretty happy with the result. I guess that's enough rambling from me. Um, I'll see you around, hopefully. Cheers. <laughs>